Yep. That sounds good to me. Okay. All right, so let me, let me start with, with um, what, what, what's happening. So as the, as the uh, canons, uh, the books of canon law are being unfolded, the next book of canon law uh, that comes after positive law is ecclesiastical law. Now, <coughs> ecclesiastical law, strictly speaking, is what we, we know as canon law. And uh, it contains a whole range of subjects. And just for the benefit of those on the call, I'm going to punch in the, excuse me, the index of the of the topics so that you can all see what um, what is coming off this. It is a um, it is a mammoth amount of work, similar to what has had to be done with um, with positive law. But I assure you, the importance of getting this right cannot be underestimated because just as they hide within the, um, the lies that they uh, tell their own and then tell us in terms of positive law, they absolutely lie when it comes to the religion, faith and history. And again, I, I'm sure none of you have any doubt that uh, you know, when the Roman cult gets in there and does its ceremonies, uh, they're not worshipping what we know as the divine creator. <laughs> so, with that in mind, it's not enough just simply to, to, to say to people uh, you're misinformed or they're, uh, they're telling you untruths. You, you need to give them a framework. Because without a framework uh, of law, <laughs> there's no way, A, for people to migrate and there's no way for, for people to make sense of it. So this is a fairly long list and I'm just going to punch it in now. But this is the... Um, the uh, uh, canons of ecclesiastical law. And I know this is far off from worrying about financial, <clears throat> but it is all connected. Uh, who did we lose? Uh, lost call. Um, okay, here we go. That's the okay. canons. So who? Oh, we lost Lee. Okay. Frank, Lee is on a Mac, so you're going to have to phone him in when he falls off. Okay, cool. All right. All right. So I'm just trying to call in Lee at the moment. Hi, Lee. Yeah, I'm back. Okay. Okay, good. We'll try Regan again. Again, can you hear us? Regan, can you hear us? Yeah, Lee, this is Lee. Good, good, good. Lost. We lost Regan again. Okay, we'll try and try and get him, uh, trying him back on. Anyway, while I'm trying to get Regan back on, I think um, we can. I think what we're saying is just don't don't really try to get him back in if if it if it causes to be a pain. Oh yeah, no, it's no pain. I don't. I, if he's if he's if we can't get him on this time, the time will will. Uh, uh, Reagan uh, is in the air flying. Oh okay, flight. all right, that's fine. All right, then he's I won't. He's going to be the panel. Okay, understand. Thank you. Okay. All right, so what we have there is the canons of ecclesiastical law. And, I, and as, I, as I just asked if this was okay, just to, to bring up to speed with what I'm doing, um, I just wanted to share you this is the next uh, section of law that we're rolling out. It, it, it's, it covers some pretty hairy subjects and some pretty important subjects, but um, without it, um, the whole point is that uh, we're dealing with people who hide behind... Uh, rituals that hide behind um, uh, history uh, and they never tell you the truth. I'll give you an example. The, <clears throat> the city of Ur was one of the oldest cities, um, in fact it was, regarded as the birthplace of uh, Abraham, as I'm sure you all are probably aware, and it was considered one of the great cities of the ancient world. 
after it had been destroyed and rebuilt and destroyed over and over, by the time of about 1000 BCE, um, what they ended up doing was, instead of rebuilding the city as a city for the living, it became the largest necropolis, the largest cemetery of the dead, city of the dead in the ancient world. Now the people then that lived there, the only people that lived in Ur were the funeral attendants. <clears throat> and they were actually called, believe it or not, Grim Reapers, the Reapers of Death. Uh-huh. And their, their name was Gali, the Gali, and they worshipped the goddess of the underworld. Now guess what the Gali wore? The Gali wore black robes. The black robe. Yeah. The black robe. That is the origin of the black robe. So when kings and queens and empresses and wealthy people wanted to be in favour in the afterlife, they their entourage would send their um, coffin or their um, mummy or their whatever to Ur to be buried with all the great gods of the ancient world. And they'd be met by the gali, the black-robed attendants of the dead. And if, if attendants were paid properly then they would bury them in a noble place and if they weren't treated properly they would basically dispose of the corpse in some um, negative fashion and obviously take any wealth that was on the corpse. So they weren't really to be trusted. They were the grim reapers and they were feared as uh, as black sorcerers. Now in 200, C, uh, 200 BCE when uh, Kai Bell, um, the Queen of Heaven, um, represented by the largest black meteorite in the ancient world, was brought to Rome as Magna Mater to protect Rome. Um, the Gali also arrived. And what they did, um, Vatican Hill was the largest necropolis of uh, Rome, but it was open air at that point. And what they did was they built the temple to Kai Bell on top of it and kept the necropolis going, but this time it was an entirely underground city of the dead. And the Gali came, and the Gali brought their black robes, and now, instead of worshipping just the Queen of the Underworld, they worshipped Saturn. So it became the black robes of Saturn, who we know as Satan. That's the black robes. Wow. Okay? Now, that history is important, because that gives you enormous power when you know the true history of the clothes they wear. That is the purpose of this next book, is to give the truth. It, people may not always find it um, uh, gentle, um, palatable. palatable, but it's the truth. Uh, well, so it's interesting, today in court, I asked the, uh, the small uh, the, the, the attorney, I said, do you understand why the judge wears a black robe and a white collar? And she looked at me. She says, I never really thought about it. I says, he is a representative of the Pope. And she said, thank you. (laughs) Well, we're going to take that even further, Lee, and we're going to show people the truth to this and and, and strip it away um, so that the law stands for what it is, uh, capable of defending itself, but no more to be corrupted by these people. No more. Absolutely, absolutely, that's wonderful. So that's the next book. And um, as, I, as you can see, there's a lot of different subjects, a lot of different challenging subjects, but uh, I, I look forward to sharing that with you in, in later calls. Um, moving on, um, the next thing, which is a, a directly relevant thing to, to all of you, is that I have sent back uh, to Regan and to a number of you the uh, link to the artwork that is able to be used to produce uh, legitimate live born records of the likes that hopefully you all saw as well as the trust IDs which I also sent to you all which hopefully you have all seen. Now the link also uh, includes the website where you can go and generate the membership number as well as generate the um, numbers needed for the uh, registration, the date and the member bond. Now, all I've asked in that in that uh, link is the following: that uh, when when these are produced, you need someone who has Photoshop, and I'm sure you will be able to find someone who does if they don't already, and that 
when these are produced, please collect and maintain on an Excel spreadsheet, which I've included on the email as a link, so that that information can be fed back to us so that we can upload it to the registers as we are getting things ready. <clears throat> now, the reason I sent that email with the artwork is that I'm concerned that people need help right now and I don't want a situation to exist where anyone at this moment uh, is in any way um, uh, impeded in not being able to generate a live-born record or their trust ID or the next thing that we need to give you, which is going to be the trust uh, deed, which is an extract from the covenant itself. <clears throat> That's not ready yet. That will come in the next couple of days. So, so in a nutshell, what, what does that mean? Well, in the email I've sent to you, and Destry, were you on that email? Did I get it to you as well? Uh, which one? From me. I, I sent it to several people. I don't want to start Outlook because it'll chew my bandwidth, but I've sent it. Whoever um, Regan emailed about... Was the trust documentation? Excuse me, brother. HL 4040C answers need your attention. Sorry. Lee, sorry. What, what was that, Destry? I'm sorry. That's right. Uh, is the subject trust documentation artwork? Yes, that's the one. Got well, it. obviously you got it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I couldn't remember what it was called. Yes, that's the one. Okay. So several of you have got it then. And it, what it means is uh, anyone that doesn't currently have a live-born record and needs one, and anyone that doesn't obviously have trust IDs, that artwork is, is, is the format for producing it and the links include how to get the membership numbers and everything. And all, as I say, all I need is that at the end of the month, please make sure that you've got a consolidated Excel spreadsheet of whomever you've prepared documents and membership numbers for. So th does that make sense, Destry? Yes. Great. So um, just, just to summarise what that means. Uh, in positive law, you have the instruction on how to produce a ecclesiastical deed poll. With the email I've sent, you've got the instruction and a number of you will have the ability to go and get your live-born records and your membership numbers created, as well as your trust IDs. The next thing you're going to get from me is the uh, uh, deed extract, which is the, the document which will help in the establishment of a special deposit bank account. And there'll be some other official documents that We'll also have some artwork formats for you. So really what we're doing here is getting you the tools you need um, that is consistent with the knowledge that you're gaining from the positive law. So can I ask for some comment before I continue? Just, uh, is, is this going to be helpful? Yes, definitely. Okay. So, so really there is, there is nothing that should be able to stop you then from using these tools as soon as you need to, to use them. Okay? Frank, how do we get that email? Uh, Destry has a copy. I'm sure Destry can forward it to you, Jimmy. Okay. Uh, now, it's not for broadcast. By that I mean it, it's not a DIY. Uh, it, but it is... Is that Jimmy Satori? Yeah, 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 that was Jimmy Satori, yeah. Uh, it, it, it's not DIY. What I'm hoping is that um, you can have enough people with the knowledge to, to build these artwork and these documents so that there's no hold up, yeah? Agreed. Okay, great. All right, next, uh, next talk about uh, financial. So last week we spoke about the um, revisions that I've been doing on the covenants and the charters to make sure that the uh, conveyance of property in light of these being deeds is properly structured so that you can see from the divine to the covenant of one heaven right through to the charters is flowing properly. <clears throat> that, that is continuing um, down now to the charters of the reserve banks. Now what is, is due next to be done for the financial system is a summary document 
on the comparison between the rights of property under the supreme financial system 